There is no doubt in my mind you get plenty of opportunities, but you're waiting for Mr. Perfect. He's not there. This is why I'm done. The new woman, not just women my age, but a lot of young women too. Honey, baby, you don't have to. Oh. You know that guy that's going viral around suggesting that some women are gonna have to settle? Oh. What I'm also realizing is a lot of women have been thinking about marrying other women. Just on some romanticizing the friendship, like a life partner, someone that can carry their weight even if they wanted to have kids. Let's see how that will work out because all the time you guys meet up, we always split in bills. And you don't want no part of this and they can like link up and have their need, their physical needs met in other way if they don't choose to scissor amongst themselves. So anyway, women are doing well. And what's also interesting is that the matriarchy is rising, evident by the women that are choosing to maintain the power and their personal growth through partnerships that are better aligned with them. And as a result, they're considering marrying amongst themselves. And technically there is a tradition within Africa where it's ma matrilineal and also matriarchal, and the women marry other women to maintain the wealth and the power dynamic. So I say this all to say, I love this for us because settle where? Actually, a study I saw where it was showing that the divorce rate for lesbian couples is higher than that of the heterosexual couples. So how is that going to work out if women start marrying each other like that? We'll see. But that won't stop men going their own way. People say to me, that like, are you scared being single in your 30s? And I'm like, no, I have a career. I don't need anything from anybody. And I've never been in that you position before, I don't think. But I think it's like such an empowering thing to be single right now. I'm like, I feel like I'm in my 20s, but with money and like purpose and fulfillment and all of that. 40s is the new 20s. And yeah. so I think the fact that society puts this pressure on women, like you need to be married, you need to have kids. Well, I think it's much worse to be married and have children with the wrong person yes. and or be in a relationship that doesn't fulfill you, that doesn't make you feel good. Mm -hmm. You need to be with the right person, not just be with a person. For so, sure. so good for you. I think Thank that you. that's all noise. You know, sometimes you got to just quiet the noise and align with what makes you feel good. And if someone doesn't make you feel good, that's in your life, you've got to say, sorry, like this isn't going to work out for me. But mm -hmm. The right person ignites you, inspires you, and, and, and gives you passion and purpose for everything that you do. Uh, you are loyal to your feelings, and that's the reason why at times you dump the right guy for you, and you go for the Ray Ray. And when the Ray Ray leaves you stranded, you hit the wall and you start crying, where are the men at? A woman who is over 30 and single and who wants to have a man, wants to have marriage, wants to have children, one of the things that you are going to have to learn how to do is to move out of the feeling of desperation. Whenever you feel like you are running out of time, um, you begin to lose hope. And what literally happens is that the things that you want move further away from you. So as long as you feel like you're missing out, you're losing out, time is going to pass you by, there are no good men available for you, all, you are putting yourself in the emotion and the spirit and the energy of desperation. And that's the war, baby. Whenever you start feeling like that, just know that that's a war. <laughs> you're about to hit it or you've already hit it. <laughs> which is only going to cause you to move further away from the things that you actually want. Instead, what you need to do is learn to manage your emotions around what it is that you're feeling and that you want. So instead of leaning into the fear, leaning into the desperation, begin to practice some sort of self-care mechanism, self-regulating mechanism that you can do on a daily basis that will help you to manage those emotions because your feelings are not facts. Your feelings, the fear, the desperation, the scarcity is attached to your social and psychological conditioning, but you can change that, right? So the key message here 
is that you cannot get the man, the marriage, the money, the children, the things that you want if you are thinking about them from the place of desperation within you. So you have to learn to move out of desperation, get into an abundance mindset, um, work on your emotional management, and then you'll be able to start thinking about things in a way that will draw them to you instead of repelling them. It, you know, one has ever defeated the war. When people say they don't like me, I put on glasses. <laughs> to see if I give I know. <laughs> So why are men afraid to approach women these days? Just look at the world that men have to exist in. If a guy mentions how nice you look, it's sexual harassment. But if he keeps quiet, it's male indifference. If he buys you flowers, he's after something. If he doesn't, he's not thoughtful. If he's proud of his achievements, he's full of himself. If he isn't, he's not ambitious. If he tries to keep himself in shape, he's vain. If he doesn't, He's a slob. If he puts a woman on a pedestal and tries to protect her from the rat race, he's a male chauvinist. If he stays at home and does housework, he's a pansy. If he lets himself be vulnerable, he's a wimp. If he doesn't, he's insensitive. If he pursues you too much, you feel like he's stalking. If he doesn't, he lacks self-confidence. You no wonder why most guys feel awkward, anxious, and downright frightened when they have to approach a woman they're interested in. Guys, next time the woman you're talking to tells you that she only wants to be friends, you reply with, Thank God that you said it first. I didn't want to hurt your feelings. <laughs> it's time to give her back her self-confidence problems. <laughs> Just a reminder, and I hope this lands on the For You page of anybody who needs to hear this, but I didn't meet the love of my life until I was 34 years old. You know what I was doing before that? Not being sad that I wasn't in a relationship. In fact, I was out here living my best life. No matter what was happening around me, no matter how many people were getting engaged, married, I just always trusted in my timing. I had a dozen opportunities to lock it down with men who wanted to marry me, but... Let's be honest here, you had hit the wall, and you're just lucky you're among the few ones who found somebody after they hit the wall. So don't lie to other women saying they should live their best life and get married at 34. They'll hit the wall. What's your plan B if nobody marries you? Eat bread and desserts and just get all fat and sassy. What was the point? If it wasn't the one, why would I waste my time? So don't let any kind of pressure push you into the wrong situation. And by the way, 34 is still quite young, but I <laughs> still get messages from people saying uh, I'm approaching 30 and like panicking. There is a lot more to life than seeking a partner, I promise you. Trust in your timing, and in the meantime, there is all this life out there for you to enjoy. What kind of timing are you talking about? Because men control relationships and women control sex. So if you're going to be around preaching, oh, you should live your best life and you don't need men in your life, what are you talking about here? How to get a man to approach you within seconds using only two body parts. One of your issues is when you go out, men don't approach you. Why are there so many single women out here that are struggling to find a man? This is how to get a guy to approach you at a bar. This idea came to me because I realized that staring at a guy or making eye contact wasn't enough to make him approach. Mm -hmm. So me and my friends, shout out to Kaylin Quange, we came up with the Great Gatsby Method. Okay, we know it well, Leo DeCap. This is what we are emulating. When you're making your eye contact, you do a little cheers. You can then take your drink back. You can keep eye contact, take a little sip. Make it your own. Make the Great Gatsby Method your own. And why we like it is because it's not, it's more than staring. It's like an action. It's addressing this person directly, but it's not quite as aggressive as like a come here. Message going around the dating community implying that highly educated, well-paid women are less desirable to the average man. And I would challenge that to say the most highly successful women tend to find the average man less desirable, thereby rendering them less desirable to the average man. A friend of mine was in a break room at his job the other day listening to a group of successful women talk about what they look for in a man. And all of them pretty much wanted a man who was doing better than them financially and ideally a man that was doing better than them in every area of life. It was interesting because when he hears men talk about what they look for in a woman, it has nothing to do with her education, nothing to do with her finances, but everything to do with her character, with her beauty. 
beauty with her ability and willingness to support him and submit to him. Think about this conversation that we haven't discussed yet is who you become in attaining your success. If you could get the degrees, if you could get the bag and you could still find yourself humble enough to support and submit to a man, even if he's not making as much money as you, then you don't fall into this category. But what tends to happen is we get the bag and we change the way we look at these men. No man wants to be looked down upon, period. You got the degrees, you got the bag, now you're trying to get the man, but you're coming into the relationship feeling as though you are better than him and so why would you submit? That mindset is going to render you less desirable to any man. You want to be the one wearing pants in the relationship. That's not going to work. You end up hitting the wall with all your degrees. <laughs> I'm just saying it. How to get a man to approach you within seconds using only two body parts, your eyes and your mouth. You're going to make eye contact with him and hold it for three to five seconds. Then look away, then look back. And during this time, you're smiling. Here's what it looks like. Creepy. Very much creepy. Actually, <laughs> I'll be scared. Like, oh, why are you looking at me like that? Are you trying to accuse me that I'm a creep or something? The reason part two to why women are single because they have unrealistic expectation. They don't want the working class man. They want the six figure man. How you want a six figure man when you don't make six figures? Or they want a man to provide them with luxury that them they self can't afford. They want men to buy them Chanel, Louis Vuitton, Gucci, but then. They can't buy it for themselves. They don't even have the money to afford to buy these things. Men have no problem with buying those things, but you have to be a girl. You have to be pure. You have to be a good girl. I mean, you have to be submissive to that man for him to be buying you all those things. But you can't be buying those things and then be told that I don't need no man. But they expect a man to come and buy it for them. No, my brother kings, don't buy them nothing. Get your passport, go to the country. What make her deserve a Chanel bag? Tell her to go buy it herself, okay? And a lot of them want good looking man or a man that's six feet and tall and they look bad. They out of shape. They don't look good. They're unattractive, but they want all this long list for a man to have to come get with them when they can't measure up to those own standards. Fellers, listen to me. If you see these kind of women, run from them. And if you're a working kind of man, and a woman is trying to pressure you to do things that you don't, drop her. Drop her immediately. Okay, guys? You don't have to put up with that. Don't date this kind of woman that's gold digger. Let them go dig gold somewhere else. And some of their body already look tired. So I don't know what kind of gold they're going to be digging, fellas. Because they can't provide a lot of that stuff for themselves. Okay, guys? You've put some points across, but why should do a fisherman listen to a fish? How to catch a fish? <laughs> it's not just gonna work. Men are dumb, and you can get them to do anything you want by using the following manipulation tactics. If he tells you he's not looking for anything serious with you, don't go like, oh yeah, no, me neither. Say you do. Just not with him. This will make him feel like he's not good enough for you, and he'll want to be better, and he'll start chasing you. When he asks you about a certain item, like a piece of jewelry or something, giggle about it. Don't give him a straight answer. This will make him think there's more to the story. You can make him feel extra insecure by saying, don't ask questions you don't want the answers to. Find a reason why the two of you cannot happen, like a stupid one. Oh, we're in the same friend group, it really wouldn't be a good idea. Guaranteed he'll want more. <laughs> we need to see part two or we need to see somebody who's tried that and come up online here to say what were the results or whether the guy fell for the bet. I'll tell you that's not gonna work. You just hit the wall button. Let me know if you want a part two. There's nothing wrong with wanting to be an independent person, but sometimes you just gotta surrender. A lot of women, at least, we want a God-fearing man. Our role as women is to be submitted to our husband. How are you gonna be submitted to your man when you're not even submitted to God? If God's telling you to surrender your plans to him and you continuously disobey that, you're just setting yourself up for failure. Here are a few reasons why successful women struggle finding love. I used to be one of them, I know. Now Oh, she hit the wall. She used to be one of them until she hit the wall. Number one, we're always looking for the perfect partner. Ticking off this massive checklist and having a tunnel vision. Number two, wanting to fix your partner and always take charge. Listen, while this works really well in your career, it can lead to some serious issues in your relationship. Moral of the story, don't bring your business boss back home. And finally, number three, really struggle being vulnerable and opening up your heart, thinking that it takes your power away, so you really try to avoid it. And I agree 100%.
Some of these women, when they make a certain amount of money, especially when they're making more money than their man, they start thinking they wear the pants in the house. They feel like they've gained superpowers. They start getting argumentative and disagreeable, but in the end, they lose a good man. Why are there so many single women out here that are struggling to find a man? Well, I'm gonna tell you the reason, but you're not gonna like the answer. Now, this may not apply to you, so don't take offense. But if you do, maybe you need to reflect why it makes you offended. Honestly, a lot of women treat men like trash. A lot of women take men for granted. A lot of women want men to take accountability for their actions and what they do. But boy, if you ask a woman to take accountability for her faults and her actions, it's straight to signing divorce papers. But my question is, why are women so resistant to taking accountability? Like really, what is the reason why you won't take accountability for your actions? I know for me personally, because I was this woman for many, many years, like most of my marriage, I realized it's because I thought I had to be perfect and that society judged me based on my level of perfection. And if I dare to take accountability for my faults and actions, then I would be even more demonized. But the reality is, me not taking accountability was making it worse. And I don't think a lot of women understand the fact that we are a lot of the problem. I'm not saying we're the whole problem, but at least on my platform, on this side of things, a lot of men are trying. They're putting in the effort. They're doing the things that they need to do. And women are taking their husbands for granted. They got married because they wanted to be married, not because they wanted to be a wife. So you single ladies struggling to find a man, most men are not even wanting to get married anymore because they've dealt with bad relationship after bad relationship of women taking them for granted and treating them like trash. And honestly, I can't blame them. If you put all the effort in for a year, didn't get anything back, you wouldn't tolerate that either. So why are we expecting men to just sit down, shut up and take it? You would advise every one of your girlfriends, girl, don't take that from him. But why should he take that from you? And honestly, I truly believe that lack of accountability is one of the number one reasons why marriages are failing. So we refuse to take ownership of the things that we need to take ownership for. I can promise you, if you take accountability for your actions and work really hard to fix them, your marriage can look completely different. Because y'all, that's where I'm sitting right now. The problem is you just got to swallow your pride, do what it takes to make a change. She's made uh, some serious uh, points there, but it's too late for her. I mean, she's already divorced the husband, and uh, now she's just dealing with what she can get. And maybe she probably has some cuts.